everybody, welcome back to the show. The week of Star Wars continues. Yesterday we got the poster in an age of light, a darkness arises. Or arises. That I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that got me fired up. Um, and then of course today we got the trailer at, and so I thought we'd talk about it. We're gonna bring some friends on. One of you 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 guys know, Johnny O, welcome back to the show. How are Hi you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. Long time no see. Long time no see. This is last week, I think. And we've got a newcomer, Chris. How are you, Chris? Hello, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, I'm good, I'm good. I hope you guys are as excited as I am to uh, dive into this trailer. Um, we all got to hang out at Celebration, and we were talking a little bit before the camera came on. Johnny got to see this trailer twice. I saw it once. Chris, this is this, so this will be the first time that you got to see it? Yeah. Awesome. First time I've got to see it in, in full. It's in little bits, you know, dodgy yeah. phone recordings every so often. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to play the trailer. And then we're just going to kind of start dissecting it a little bit. Bring this up. I'll go live. Of course, now I probably won't want to work because that's usually how things go for me. Live. Preview. Live. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. Tell me what comes into your mind. Life. Balance. I see fire. <laughs> Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. What happened? I sense the darkness. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power. And who is allowed to use it? What is that? So, <laughs> right off the bat, the first time you watched it, what were your thoughts, Chris? Jedi. I was just absolutely buzzed to see a load of Jedi igniting their lightsabers and just going for it. Like, you haven't seen anything like that since, what, Attack of the Clones? That was the first time we got that proper big arena battle with all the Jedi, and it's just, it's just great to see. Oh, yeah. What about you, Johnny? Yeah, um, I mean, first of all, I love the kind of the ominous music slash sound effect i'm not really sure <laughs> but yeah that was fantastic it's very similar to what we saw at celebration um a few differences you know is i think there's some different like shots same scenes but from different angles because the wider shots because it's the vfx is more done now and that kind of stuff but it still gets me so excited Oh yeah, I stopped. <laughs> I Just stopped my it, last I day at ten ten oh one. I stopped, and I'm like, I'm I'm in the middle. I've told Johnny this. I was in the middle of World War One, the beginning of it, for my world history <laughs> class. And we're talking about Gavrilo <laughs> Princep and the Archduke Franz Ferdinand and all this good stuff. And I'm like, no, nope, it's ten oh one. The kids are like, what? Like I was all into the story, and we stopped it. We watched it, and I mean, I only got to see it once at celebration. And I was like, oh, and I got some reaction from my kids. I think sometimes they're too nervous to react, you know, because it's not cool to like Star Wars, which yeah. I'm, I mean, in my classroom, you think it would be fine. But yeah, I'm, I am so pumped for this, um, this, this uh, new show. But just to give people a little background that may not know about it, because I know we got some listeners who don't read the High Republic. Chris, do you read the High Republic stuff? 
So I'm currently about to start the Fallen Star. That's how far oh. I am. In I am. So I'm. But you, yeah, so at you the start my journey. But I, I've got an understanding of it, which is yeah. Good. So no, that's good because I mean you understand the errors and things like that. But for yeah. people who don't. The High Republic is this. Uh, well, it's books, it's comics, it's audio dramas, and it's set from 500 BBY to 100 BBY, but before the Battle of Yavin, and then we're kind of going into this the fall of the Jedi era from 100 BBY to 19 BBY. I think, would you think that like that's kind of where we're at now? That's 100 BBY, like the yeah, fall of the Jedi. That's this what I've kind of read right? about it, and it's like yeah. about 100 years before BBY or the prequels, and then about right at the very end of the High Republic. So it's probably, you know, this is maybe like the turning point between the High Republic and like the fall of the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I, th- I was thinking too. I was looking that up just to clarify it. Um, and so, okay, so right off the bat, we've got um, is it Lee Young Jay, and I apologize again. It's the it's the explore the force way to jack up names real bad on here. But his <laughs> it looks like his name is Soul S O L yep. from the, yeah. uh, the uh, uh, and he's a, he's a guy from Squid Game, which I've never watched, but I've heard great things about. And he's talking to the younglings. And so let's just talk about that scene and about the things because he's talking about not trusting your eyes. They can deceive you. And like, what do you see? And one youngling says life. The next one says balance. And you're like, ooh, it's all Star Wars. And the next one says fire. <laughs> and so, I mean, and then it just kind of pops off from there. So what do you guys think of that opening? Like, kind of slow, but, I mean, I loved mm. it. I love the visuals of it. So obviously, like, the wording is really important as well, like you were saying. But, like, visually... <laughs> How exciting was it to see that really fresh, clean Jedi view you've just mm. got? Everything's shiny and new, isn't it? Like everything looks cleaner than it did in the prequels. Like it's all white. It's it's just brighter, isn't it? So, and it, all their white robes as well. Um, so yeah, and then obviously linking in with like what they're talking about links in with the kind of stuff that even Obi Wan Kenobi says to Luke. Like trust your feelings. It's not about what you, like like I said like vision can let you down can't it so yeah it's and then yeah kicks off with the whole i see, <laughs> I see fire she says is that it yeah, yeah. She, i see yeah. fire and then that's when fire. we get into the, yeah. the next which i think is been... really cool because it kind of links back to the high republic books because it's really descriptive in there of how every jedi sees the force mm, yeah so you know assumedly that's how she sees the force is like a raging fire like um was it uh Elza Man sees it as an ocean or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of similar to that. It's, you know, it's a force of nature. I think um, I'll be closer on her. I do wonder whether that's the flashback scene. That's what I was thinking. The kid that says fire is May to yes. the acolyte. That's so, yeah. what I was thinking. I was going to ask you guys that. Do you think that's a flashback scene? Like Could she's be. remembering or he's remembering? Like I saw, I saw the warning signs. <laughs> <laughs> It could be because don't we see like obviously they're all like white robes there and then mm-hmm. a bit later on they're in a different shape, they're in like a browner robe. I don't know if that's because obviously in the books they have different kind of robes, then they've got like ceremonial ones and then they've got so it might be more that yeah. because obviously in the prequels we just see brown, that's the robes they've got. <laughs> Yeah, in the in the temple, out the temple. Yeah, you stick. might just wear your nice fresh white ones in the yeah, temple, and then wear the brown ones when you're out in the field. Yeah, <laughs> could be an indication that yeah, you're right. That was that was a few years back, and now um, it, it might skip forward a little bit. Yeah, that yeah, I'm I'm excited for that look in that peek into like everything we've been reading to get to see it live action, and it looks like it's translating pretty well, and um. You know, we we think that there are a few characters that may be sprinkled in here from what we've read, but um, the next scene, there's a kind of some flashes, and then of course we've got the big um, fight scene with uh, Carrie Ann Moss's character, which I don't know. Do we have the name of her character? Uh, I didn't see anything. Master remember. Indara. Okay, so yeah, we do, and she goes all Trinity on that assassin. <laughs> which, how did you guys? I mean. I mean, you had that opening scene, it's calm, you know, everything we expect in a Jedi temple, training younglings, and then, of course, she says fire, and then all of a sudden that assassin walks in, and, you know, we're, we're seeing scenes from the Matrix. <laughs> How do you, you guys feel about really that fight scene? Do you like it? No, no lightsabers involved, just straight up, looks like, I mean, just martial arts, really, mixed with the Force, yeah. which seems phenomenal. 
Yeah, I loved it. Um, I think it makes perfect sense, you know. The Jedi are surely trained what to do if they lose their lightsaber in a fight or they don't have access to their lightsaber for whatever reason. They've got to be good at hand-to-hand combat, especially when you've got the Force. So it's awesome to see that on screen, I think. Yeah, it's, you, Chris? it's a different, it's a sort of different change of pace, isn't it? Because I keep referring to the prequels and stuff, but that's kind of our reference point for what Jedi are. Like, especially in there, well, when we first saw the prequels, we kind of thought, oh, this must be what the Jedi are. Um, so yeah, that's kind of our reference point. But I think, yeah, it's not just straight to lightsaber slashing away. It's like, yeah, we're trained in so many different things. The only thing I would say, obviously, with Carrie and Carrie Ann Moss, isn't it? It's, yeah, like you said, straight away, it's, it's Trinity, it's Matrix. <laughs> it did get that sort of vibe. Does that concern me a tiny bit? Yeah. Like, I feel like we have that with Star Wars, especially in the newer stuff, is throwing in well-known actors, and you're like, oh, it just, yeah. And then doing the same sort of stuff she does in the Matrix as well, you're kind of like, give her, give her blonde hair or something, just change up a little bit, make her look a little bit different. But <laughs> I'm excited because I do like her, and I think she's obviously very good at what she does. Um, so I think we are going to see some some good action in this, which will be enjoyable as well. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's it's a pretty good point. Um, yeah, is she being typecast kind of thing? You know, I mean, I did expect to see some of that when she was in the Daredevil uh, series, but she didn't mm-hmm. really do much there. But yeah, I'm excited to see it. We'll see what happens. Um, that's fighting style, like just the idea of the force and martial arts gets me super excited for that fight scene and even the one later on with the the assassin and master soul when it looks like they're fighting out in that area that looks really great um and then we kind of move forward and we see we see some different characters they just kind of show us some different characters and um i that the first kid I don't know how much you guys have wa- looked at the like the phase three stuff, but it kind of looks like what Bell Zedifar looks like. I mean, I know yeah. Bell's a human, so he's probably not still alive, but man, I got some serious Bell Zedifar <laughs> vibes from that. And then, of course, we get the Wookiee. Um, Different Wookiee, isn't that? That's what Hell they're saying, God. but is it a could different it a Wookiee? Problem. Yeah, you think <laughs> it could be a red herring? Yeah. To yeah, like, drop it on us or whatever. Or right now, <laughs> right now, if you had to, if you had to, you had to bet, and you're going to get a million dollars one way or the other. Is that Buriaga? Yes or no, Johnny? Go. I really want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a million dollars on the line, I'm less certain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could always keep it Kelnaka, and then right at the end of the books, they drop something that something happens to Buriaga, and they change his name to Kelnaka. Yeah, possibly. But regardless, I'm buying the action figure, putting it on the shelf next to my Her Republic oh. books, and saying it's Burio. There you go. <laughs> what about you, Chris? <laughs> I'm gonna. Sp- I'd like to say yes. I think. I think they might be just throwing out their different names. Something's happened because realistically, two Wookiee Jedi, I think, is a bit of a stretch just mm-hmm. from what we know of Wookies. Like, We've only seen, really seen how long they live as well. So yeah. theoretically, Buryaga could be alive, and then yeah. this Jedi could have been alive back then. Mm-hmm. And then you that then there's three because there's, there's, a, there's another one in High Republic. Oh um, yeah, a master. I can't remember his name now. Mm. But yeah, that's, so that would make three in yeah, the order yeah. at the same time, which would seem a little bit much, maybe. And then nothing yeah. moving forward. Like, so what's happening to him? Yeah, <laughs> Johnny's you know, saying... a long time. Johnny's saying live on the on the air that we're going to get a Buryaga Wookiee <laughs> Jedi movie. I think that's what I hear Johnny saying. <laughs> I'm excited for that, Johnny. Thanks for dropping that news on us. <laughs> okay, I'll go. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, we get a... I didn't even see it the first time I watched watched it. Those doors open up, and this person walks through. I didn't even think anything. I'm like, oh, look, cool. They're, they're, they're opening doors like I usually do. You know, walking in there and waving my hand to the automatic doors. On the second viewing, I realized she's green. And I thought, well, that's for Nestor Rowe. So what do you guys think about getting to see her? Because, I mean, she's the one that we know for sure. Mm. And they told us at Celebration that that is Vernestra. And Vernestra is key. Yeah to everything that's happening in the High Republic Phase 1, and, and now with Defy the Storm, 
uh, Phase 3. And she's going to be one of the few carryovers from the books, from what we were told. That guy's, that gets you guys excited. She looks so different. And do you think we're going to get to see that whip lightsaber? <laughs> that would be pretty crazy. That would be insane. <laughs> I don't know if they'll do that or not. You know, would, maybe because yeah. she's... A, I didn't realize Mary Arlen's was so long-lived for starters. Well, I actually um, looked that up right beforehand. I couldn't find anything on lifespan. Yeah. So. So it could be something that, you know, over time, if she's, as she's long lived, that she just, you know, went to a regular lightsaber, maybe. Mm-hmm. If they did do it, it'd be pretty crazy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it would be crazy. Cool. Like, you you like see the whip. Like, live action, wouldn't it? Seeing a lightsaber whip. It would be insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be difficult for them to do it with special effects or anything. You know, it's not, not like sure. it was. We're not in 1977 where they're trying not to smack, you know, not to hit the swords together. We're in a <laughs> kind of era now where it's like the crazier the better. So I'm saying bring it on. I hope we get to see it. Maybe they hold off until like later she's just using it, using it, and then boom, she drops it into the whip or something, which would be pretty awesome. Um, yeah. And that's another action figure I want. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. sp- oh, we want these actually. <laughs> one of the books that started to come out in the comics is mad that we haven't seen a single yeah. one yet. We've had, I mean, this is a whole other discussion to be fair, but yeah, <laughs> the stuff we get, especially some of the older, like, I mean, we've got we've got old Republic figures, why don't we got High Republic figures? But yeah, yeah. we should go want- about the debate about figures. <laughs> do you think, do you think though, because People who don't know, I know Chris is Chris's first time, but Chris, like, if you can see behind Chris, if you're watching on YouTube, he has a massive, massive Power of the Force <laughs> collection, not just a little tidbit of it. Um, so he, you know, he knows all about collecting. Do you guys think that when the Acolyte comes out, you know, are we getting Lego? Are we getting um, action figures? Are we getting Funko Pop? Like, I mean, do you think that's yeah, when it's all going to kick off? And yeah, then we'll start all the usual stuff. Box? Yeah, we'll get Lego, we'll get Funko Pop, yeah. and then four years' time, we'll start getting some vintage collection, and then five years' time, we'll get some black series. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, we just, Lego and Funko just get out quicker, don't they? So I reckon yeah. we'll definitely see some Lego sets be released around the time, some ships and stuff, I reckon. They'll definitely well, throw in so. there. Um, and hopefully we'll get some sort of pipeline reveal or something from Hasbro when it comes to actual Black Series and sort of vintage collection. Because I think they'll be immensely popular. There's such a massive fan base for High Republic as it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. When, I tell you yeah. what. Who are desperate for that kind of stuff. Yes, yeah, because Johnny and I were both at Chicago, and that's when they announced Project Illumin- was it Illuminous or whatever. I think, yeah, Project Luminous. Yeah. Luminous. And then when I was at Anaheim next year, I, I only made it into I made it into all the High Republic stuff because there was like no one that wanted to be there. No one really knew what was going on. And then by the time we got to London, those things were packed and that environment was insane i mean it was so much fun to be uh part of so yeah i think you guys are right though i think they're you know it's growing and maybe you know for collectors like all of us we'll get the stuff we need um the next thing i saw and you guys can stop me if, if you want to talk about anything else but there there's a lady and she talks about it's it's not about good or bad it's about power and i feel like that kind of sets the tone i mean the whole thing is setting the tone it seems dark it's almost you know, Andor style, but this kind of sounds like a carry on from Martian Rowe. Like he doesn't really care about good or bad. He just cares about having the power. What did you guys think about that? Do you think, I mean, is that the theme of this show moving forward? Cause I mean, the Sith see things they don't see, you know, like from a certain point of view, they're the good guys, you know, in their eyes, I guess. I mean, the, the crazy people always think they're doing the right thing. So <laughs> What do you guys think about that? Was that, that was that in, did that jump out to you when you heard it? Yeah, because I think like we don't know what faction or is the bad guys in this, do we? Like we don't know where this evil is going to come from and what it's going to look like. We just know that yeah, power is what everyone wants. The Jedi at this time have this power that people don't understand. People don't grasp it and that's why the jedi are held in that such high esteem at this time because they've got this incredible power they put it to good use and they're helping out throughout the galaxy um so yeah and then you've probably got these cults who think well i want this power how do i get this power i'm not good i'm not bad i just want this power yeah yeah that's a, a vibe i got from the the woman that jimmy was referring to is like you know the, the lady that had the facial markings and stuff mm-hmm. she gave off like a cult leader vibe mm-hmm. and 
there was around the time that the trailer came out, they've put a couple of the names of the characters up on StarWars.com with like a little two liner about who they are. And her name is Mother Anisea, and she's the leader of a coven of witches. Ooh. <laughs> All so right. Wait, maybe, it, got- maybe it could just be like a dark side thing, mm. you know, just yeah. like another cult that's not the Sith that. The acolyte, yeah, for people um, who don't know, like encounters. there's a ton of different force using groups in the High Republic. Um, you see a lot more of it in Phase Two because they jump back and you're in Jeddah and there's all this stuff going on in the comic books and there's all these cults and different, uh, you know, factions of force users. So yeah, maybe that's what that is. That would be cool to get to see that live because I mean we've never really seen anything except for Jedi Sith. So to see another group manipulating it kind of like the path does in phase two would be kind of neat. I think. Um, yeah, definitely. And then, so I remember at Celebration, the ending, and a lot of people were really hyped because we got to see that scene with the, the, the lightsabers all come on. And like Chris was like, you said, it's like one of the first times we've seen that many lightsabers since Attack of the Clones. And, um, but on this one, they've changed it, right? They have the, the Jedi Jeki was her name. I saw, um, and she's like, what is that? And all of a sudden that red lightsaber comes flying through the trees and the person catches it. Of course, they don't show who or what that is. And then all the Jedi light those lightsabers. And we'll talk about that scene specifically, but then, um, and then they start charging and just get walloped with four, like, it looks like a force push or something. So. I mean, you have the tone from the start. It's dark, it's dark, it's dark, it's dark. And then all these Jedi get just absolutely walloped um, by this. Well, we, is it a Sith? Is, it a, is that the Acolyte? Like, what do you guys think about that last little bit, that last, you know, one third of the uh, trailer? Um, yeah, like, red lightsaber raises questions straight away. I think for any Star Wars fans, like, hold up. Why are we seeing a red lightsaber mm-hmm. this close to Phantom Menace? Um, but then it does raise a question. Maybe that is someone, could be Plagueis, couldn't it? He could be in there. Then he wipes out this whole section that have got, that have found him, that have uncovered his secrets. It could be something where this story leads to Plagueis, maybe, and then wipes out this massive chunk of Jedi. Because as well, like, there's so many Jedi at the moment that in this era that you could easily just wipe out a section and it doesn't wipe out the Jedi. So, but yeah, it's a, uh, it was. It, I was surprised to see a red lightsaber. To be fair, I didn't. Think I it was would. stunned by it. Mm. What about you, John? I don't think the red lightsaber was in the trailer at Celebration. Mm-hmm. I feel like all they like, did was they all lit around. Up and it was a slightly different angle. It was a little bit mm-hmm. more front on when they lit up, or mm-hmm. when the Jedi all lit up their lightsabers before. And this yeah. was a bit more side on. And obviously, you had the, the red lightsaber being thrown and stuff. Yeah, like Chris said, it's what's going on with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It, it, yeah, it doesn't make you uh, optimistic about some of these Jedi making it out, exactly. Yeah, um, Chris, I think you might be right. I think we, <laughs> people are going to eat it here shortly, I think, in that scene. But, yeah, um, that, I don't know. I, I know at Celebration we got to see those lightsabers come on, and that was something like Jack, I mean, Jack's ready for this show, and that's one of the reasons is he got to see that. Um and at the last I talked to him, he had just gotten out of the field, so he hadn't even seen the, the trailer yet. So I'm waiting to hear like him start blowing up my phone. But um, just getting to see all those lightsabers, like, what does that what does that do to you guys? I mean, just, I mean, I know I'm like I'm like giddy thinking about it, yeah. you know. And I mean, like, they're probably all like Chris said, they're probably all about to eat it. But um, <laughs> I'm still fired up to see it. <laughs> oh yeah. It doesn't take you back, on it, to just everything Star Wars related. Like, you think of video games that you play as, like, when you're younger and they were so much more focused on lightsabers. You could have, like, was it the Jedi Academy game? I can't remember where you could have, like, so many different color lightsabers. And that was the first kind of time where you started playing around with different color sabers and stuff like that because I thought it was just blue-green, wasn't it? And then, mm-hmm. obviously, purple. But seeing the yellows, the oranges, it's yeah. just... It's just so cool. Yeah, I love seeing the yellows. <laughs> like, as many colour lightsabers you can give me, I just love it. Absolutely. How about you, Johnny? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's just, it's great to see. Um, love seeing the yellow ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we pretty, yeah, pretty much covered it. Um, 
Although, what was that? I was going to say the um, the the Padawan Jackie. That's mm-hmm. Daphne Keen, who was that, in that was Logan. I wondered. Yeah, she used the yeah. one from Logan. Is that what you just said? Yeah. She's from Logan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was yeah. like the little. Not, not sure of... what species she's meant to be. Very like, yeah. pale skinned and stuff. And I'll be like interested that to find that out. Painting on her face, but yeah, I can't wait for this encyclopedia to drop. So this yes. will be exciting to get through. But um, yeah, the art of book. So it comes out June the fourth, two pr- two episode premiere, which I'm super mm-hmm. excited for. That's yeah, awesome. We'll be booking the day off. Yes, I. Well, for me, it'll be summertime, so I'll be like, I'm just going to be oh, sitting nice. waiting. Like, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, nothing's happening during that week. I got three questions I want to ask you guys, and then we'll I'll let you guys go. I do appreciate your time, and I understand that you know it's probably dinner time for both of you, so I'll keep you from getting in trouble. Um, First and foremost, were you good with the tone of this trailer? Like, are you excited for the with the tone? Like, yes, no. You're worried that maybe it's too dark. Uh, no, no I, I love the tone. Um, I thought, you know, it gives that kind of an ominous tone, but it also gave me plenty of High Republic feels. Um, yeah, I thought uh, the amount of action was good. Um, I think we're going to get some good, like Jedi. Padawan kind of relationships, hopefully, because um, we've only really ever had one proper one yep. on screen, and that's Obi Wan and Anakin. Um, so getting some more time with that, yeah, and also like the the fact that it's um, kind of billed as a mystery, mm-hmm. where the Jedi that's are detectives cool. again yeah, to mention cool. Attack of the Clones again. That's the only time we've really properly had that on screen. Is you know Obi Wan in Attack of the Clones going around searching out what's going on. Um, and it's something we get a lot in books, not just in the High Republic, of Jedi being detectives and having to figure out mysteries. So I'm really uh, excited for that aspect as well. Yeah, that'd be great. What about you, Chris? How are the tone? Yeah, I thought it was it was exactly what I was expecting. It was It's a bit darker, but I think the whole name, The Acolyte, we expected this to be a darker Star Wars series, which I think is pretty refreshing. It's also quite refreshing that it is set in a outside of the skywalker saga isn't it it's just going to be nice that we're going to have this fresh view we don't have to worry about how palpatine was cloned and brought back to life (laughs) we can just relax and enjoy that and just get some fresh fresh star wars with no baggage and and i think visually as well it looks really good i think they've obviously gone i've i'm assuming they've done some on like location shoots as well because that's some what i've heard they've, they've tried to get a good mix of it i think people really like I, they, they have to realize like the, the excitement for andor and how how real it felt and they they've got to try to duplicate the feelings and how excited people were for that um are you worried okay so the last thing we see is that red lightsaber that those people get smoked are you worried that this is going to upset canon at all do you think we're reading into it because you know yoda and i think is it Mace that say, you know, the Sith haven't been seen for thousands of years in... Oh, Coyote Mundi, wasn't it? Oh, Coyote. So, yeah. So, do you think <laughs> that... I mean, obviously, we've got a long story. This is not supposed to be just one season. It's rumored, right, that it's going to be multiple seasons. So, um, do you have any concerns about canon lining up I f- at all? I... As long as this has closure i think that's one of the most important things i think this series you can if you want to throw some sif in there throw some sif in there as long as there is closure to those sif and why a hundred years or 50 years in the future they're like oh they've been extinct for millennia there's no sif like if you give us a good story and close that story that's like cool yeah they wouldn't know about this because those 25 jedi that thought that sif all dead like yeah. fine that's that was what I want. I, there's too much open ended open endedness in Star Wars at the moment. I think with a lot of things, um, a lot of the series we get, everything is sort of just left. Um, so yeah, I think just give us a good solid story of us beginning and an end. I'll be happy. Yeah, that would be great. What about you, Johnny? Yeah, um, what Chris said basically, as long as there's closure, I think it'll be fine. Um, and I think we will get that because especially if as long as they, you know, the show's a success and they see it through to its conclusion, you know, they've got it planned, say it's three seasons or something. And I think, you know, Leslie, because um, when we were at Celebration in the High Republic panel, they brought Leslie Headland out and 
she was talking and she really came across as somebody that was a genuine fan of Star Wars, uh, knew her stuff about Star mm-hmm. Wars and was passionate about it. Um, so I, I, I think that she'll um, kind of, you know, honor what's come before and make sure it's all neat and tidy and it's not going to break mind. anything. Yeah. Yeah. And this is my last question. Of course, we're three giant Star Wars nerds, right? There's no <laughs> way around it. Okay. Do you think it was a good idea or a bad idea? Because a lot of people are going to watch this trailer because it's going to get, I don't know, it's probably over, I mean, how many millions of views it probably already had since it's come out a few hours ago. Was it good or bad not to have a little green guy that we all know and love to maybe show up in the trailer? So, because, you know, like people, I, for me, reading Light of the Jedi, like Yoda was like an anchor because there was so much new that I anchored to Yoda. I mean, he's only in it. I mean, his voice is in it, really, right? I mean, um, or his thought process, I guess. But do you, do you, did you expect to see him? Do you think it was maybe a miss just because it'll pull people in? Like, hey, what's he doing there? Or do you think that it'll just been some confusion? Like, is that Grogu? You know, people can't really even <laughs> decipher between the two. So what are your thoughts on, uh, like, not them not using Yoda at all? Are you, you know, do you like it? Like, it's fresh, it's new, it's, you know, does he pop up kind of thing? I think it was smart not to, to be honest. I think, yeah, let, it, this is fresh and new. He might be in it, and if he's in it, cool. Um, but we don't want to sit each week waiting to see him. I think if you have him in the trailer, every episode you'll be like, oh, is Yoda going to be in this one? Is Yoda going to be in this one? We don't know now, so we'll just... And kind of what you said about the Baby Yoda stuff, yeah, so easy that you might just get some Mandalorian fans being like, oh, is this, is this the future? Have, have we gone forward? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> to confuse the... Uh, the casuals out there, but no, I think it was smart. Let's like let's keep this as as not as far away from the Skywalker as was possible, but let's keep it keep it what it is. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, I think the fact that Yoda's not in the trailer helps to sell it as something. This is something fresh and new. You don't have to have a lot of prior knowledge um, of Star Wars um, and all the things that have been going on in in recent years. Um, he like say he could well pop up during the course of it, or even if he's just name dropped, you know, makes sense. But it just helps to sell it as something fresh and new that people can get into without having to worry about oh, I've got to go and watch this or watch you know the animated series or whatever. Because I know a few people that were turned off by Ahsoka because they felt like they were it's missing true. prior knowledge. I think that as well. I don't know about you guys, but we're what over halfway through Bad Batch, and I'm still waiting for Ventress. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. I was like, when you we brought that up, that's an like, excellent point because I'm just like, every week it's like a Saw's Ventress watch. Like, mm-hmm. when are they going to show up? When are they going to show yeah. up? And so, yeah, that's that's a good shout. Like, yeah, that makes total sense because I'm assuming we'll hear them or mention them or something. It'd be cool to see them in some white robes or whatever. But yeah, that's a really good sh- a good point. Um, so we're gonna we'll he- we'll go ahead and we're gonna end on your final thoughts if you have any. And then you guys can tell us where we can find you. And then I'm going to let you guys go eat dinner because uh, <laughs> people can't figure it out. These guys are not from the States. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little later there than it is here. Um, Chris, your final thoughts and then where people can find you on uh, social media. Yes. So I'm excited. I think this is going to be fresh. It's going to be new. It's something which I think a lot of Star Wars fans are going to really embrace and it's nice that we can sort of detach from everything that's gone beforehand and we can just enjoy a series without it having to time with everything. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And, awesome. yeah, if you want a closer look at my insane collection and all the stuff <laughs> I keep buying with my money that I'm really responsible with, um, yeah, I'm at Kenobi Collects on Instagram. Awesome. I mean, you still need to get you on the show, talk about collecting. Maybe once we start Absolutely. getting High Republic stuff or <laughs> Acolyte Absolutely. stuff, we'll get you on here yeah. sooner. Or... What about you, Johnny? Uh, yeah, just excited. Why is June so far away? I know, right? Um, <laughs> and yeah, just yeah, excited for something like Chris said, fresh and new. You know, the doesn't come with too much baggage. Um, and yeah, more Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys nailed it more star wars fresh yeah. and new johnny tell where, where where can people find you uh at starbird files on instagram is the best place to find me and then you can find a link in my bio there it'll take you to other places yeah 
And if, you, if you're interested in this High Republic stuff, Johnny has tons of reviews on the books. You can dive into that stuff. Breaks everything down really, really well. You can kind of get a feel for um, the High Republic is just through reading his, um, his, his stuff. So, again, fellas, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day. Join us. Join me, not us. I guess I'm the only one here today. But um, And hopefully we'll see you guys soon. And uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that maybe tomorrow is the day that Asajj shows up. <laughs> <laughs> My day, yeah. you never know. Yeah. All right, fellas. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.